Well, welcome to the CX Green Room, where we talk about the hot topics in customer and employee experience with subject matter experts from Genesis and its customers, with industry thought leaders and you. So feel free to drop questions and comments in the chat at any time uh, during today's discussion. And welcome. And so, Claire. Oh, oh, and who am I? That's a good. That's a good thing to know. I'm Ginger Conlon. I'm your co-host, and I am thought leadership director uh, at Genesis. And um, so, and my co-host is Claire. And you. So feel. Hi everyone. My name is Claire Beattie. I'm senior director for thought leadership. Uh, joining us today, our special guest, uh, Dr. Natalie Petterhoff, who is the co-author of the award-winning book, uh, Empathy in Action, published uh, in collaboration with Genesis CEO, Tony Bates. Uh, Natalie, welcome to the show today. Thank you. I'm really excited. And guys, how did you know you sent me my favorite ice cream? Oh my God. And the flowers, they're just gorgeous. They're beautiful. Thank you. So we wanted to have some fun with our theme, the CX Green Room, really uh, bringing in um, experts in the field of CX and making them feel as comfortable as they can be so they'll really spill the secrets about CX with us. So we heard, uh, we heard reportedly Mariah Carey insisting on kittens backstage, uh, <laughs> Eminem insisting on a koi pond. So we asked uh, Natalie, what would she like in the CX Green Room? Natalie, what did you insist we provide for you to make you feel extra comfortable? Ben and Jerry's coconut seven layer non-dairy frozen ice cream. It is like the best dessert. And then of course, tulips. Um, they're a little bit out of season, but it's my mom's favorite uh, flower and um we dedicated the book to our mom. So I thought that would be really fitting. So thanks guys. That's wonderful. And we did our, our level best to uh, make this one green room. So I have scoured the streets of Nairobi where I live, Ben and Jerry's. You can find it and here I have it. It's a fair way to heaven. I've just tucked in, it's absolutely delicious. Uh, we couldn't find uh, tulips in Nairobi, but we do have some pink roses, so. I hope that will, will work. Ginger, what about you in New York? So here in New York City, I thought, okay, it's off season for tulips. What else can I get that's pink? Because Natalie specifically asked for pink tulips. So I got a pink donut. Ooh. Because why oh not? Gosh, yum. It's beautiful too. Yes. <laughs> All right, Ginger, do you want to kick us off with the questions for Natalie? Yes, yes. We, I guess, you know, I got distracted by the donut. It's been sitting here for like an hour. So, yes, now we should focus on talking CX. And so, Natalie, let's level set by defining empathy in the context of the customer experience, because it's not what you might think. No, and it's been an interesting journey. So you put a title on a book and you wonder what people are going to think. And so one of the first things that often when we're having this discussion is separating empathy from sympathy. So it's interestingly often confused. And so sympathy, for instance, might be hearing something that happened to someone and you say, gosh, I'm really sorry that's happening to you. And while that may be a kind thing and a good thing to do, it's not quite the same thing as empathy. And I really want to stress that we're not really talking about creating kumbaya factories. So I would say sympathy is responding from our own perceptions of the situation. And we might be feeling sorry for someone or pity or compassion. And the way that we looked at empathy is really that ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and then see the world through their eyes. And when you see it through their eyes, what we found was really interesting. And so think about you're a CEO of a company, right? And you're making all these decisions. And then think about yourself as a person, right? Who's shopping 
and you're calling your, your healthcare company or your cable company and you have press one for press 64 for, right? What we wanted to bring back and really presence is what is that experience that people have, whether you're an employee or a customer, when you're interacting with a company and when you sit in the seat of that person, if you feel like you're wasting your time or you're not sure when you're interacting with a chat bot, if you can trust what's being said to you or written to you. I mean, oftentimes I know, you know, I'll, I'll do a chat bot and then I'm like, eh, I'm not really sure where that information went. Uh, maybe I'll use another channel. So oftentimes that notion of first contact resolution uh, can be fret with issues. And uh, so, yeah, I think, I think what we mean by empathy is really sitting in the seat of those other people. You, you outline four uh, critical capabilities uh, for organizations to be able to empathize with their customers and their employees in the book. Would you share s some more about those capabilities, those four critical capabilities with us today? I will. But first, before we go there, another distinction around empathy. So one of the things that we found was that if you go... So there's one of the my most favorite shows on TV, and I've watched it a couple of times now, is um, the History Channel has, uh, it's called The Titans Who Built America, and it goes all the way back to the first Industrial Revolution. And when you watch the show, which I highly recommend, what you see is a historical footprint of business-centric efficiency and effectiveness. And they were so inventive and so creative and created all these really cool new things, right? Steel and uh, cars and planes and all these really cool things, but they did it at the cost of people and how people were treated. So now, you know, flash forward 100, 150 years. And what we see is a lot of that same legacy thinking about business centric strategies and technology centered on cost cutting are still present. And that type of legacy strategy and technology doesn't always provide you with a cost cutting reduction that you anticipate, especially when the customer's intent ends up in a dead end. So part of what we also want to present in terms of empathy is looking at when you are empathetic, you really want to start asking your business questions about are you using, I mean, efficiency and effectiveness are great, right? So oftentimes, if you think about it, a customer doesn't want an interaction that's long, right? A company doesn't want it to be long either, but they don't want it to be long because it saves them money. A customer doesn't want it to be long because it reduces their frustration or first contact resolution, right? So you're looking at those experiences and people are, are saying, you know what, I only want to reach you once, right? And so companies want that, again, because it saves money. So it's a cost-cutting exercise. Customers want it because they just want to get what they need done and they want to trust you. So it's really important to look at the technology that you're using and um, to be able to make sure that the bots that you're using aren't using canned answers, that people can really get the information they need, when you start to really put yourself in the shoes of the agents, do they really have all the information that they need to quickly and easily serve customers? And if not, then old strategies and technologies, they really mean more interactions, longer interactions, and often very frustrated customers who take their frustrations out on agents. And I've always been fascinated about the contact center world, you know, going into contact centers or customer experience centers and sitting side by side with agents and seeing how rude customers can be, right? And yelling and taking their frustrations out. And so I always thought, could I ever do that job, right? It's a really hard job. And, you know, if, if they don't have what they need and the customer gets frustrated, that's part of what I think leads to the high attrition rates. And, you know, we're experiencing the great resignation right now. And I think what has happened, you know, COVID caused like the whole world to slow down. It's a great 
pause for pause. And in that, I think a lot of people said, you know what, I'm not really sure if this is what I want for my life. And so they quit, they retired, they got a different job. And so part of what brands are facing now is they don't have enough staff. And so not only do we need to put ourselves in the shoes of our customers, but we also need to put ourselves in the shoes of our employees. Um, you know, and oftentimes our experiences or the experience of a company is being compared to an iconic brand. So, you know, it's often said we live in an experience economy. So, you know, think about this. Your customers are waking up, they get on their Peloton bike, they take a Lyft or Uber to the Apple store to get their new watch or phone. Then they stop at Starbucks, use the Wi-Fi and plan their next day at Airbnb. So what these brands have in common is they're not just selling a product. They're selling an experience. So part of putting yourself in the shoes of other people, your customers and your employees, regardless of the industry that you're in, your customers are comparing their experience, your brand, to that last experience, even if it's not in the same vertical market. And so you have to start to look at, well, we probably feel this way. We have the best products to offer your customers, but do we have the kind of experiences that are really going to garner the type of loyalty that you need in this new experience economy? Yeah, that's that's a great point, Natalie. And you know, when you think about the elements that underlie delivering those great experiences, they go back to Claire's question about um, the critical capabilities that you mentioned in the book. And correct me if I'm wrong, it's listening, understanding and predicting, acting and learning. Yes. So let's start very simply because it, this is another thing that we tried to break it down really simply and then we'll, we'll expand on it. So we created four empathy pillars. And let's say that we were in a conversation. The first thing I do naturally is I'd listen and I would take in everything you were saying and I would understand what's important to you. And then I begin to think or kind of predict how could I contribute to a conversation? So for Ginger, it might be talking about my last workout with my trainer. So Ginger, I don't know if you know this, but I have a trainer and we work out on FaceTime which is really nice because I don't have to go anywhere. Um, and when the phone rings, I, it's not like I can cancel or right? I've got to answer the phone. And with Claire, you know, being able to um, experience other cultures and to like be able to work from a different location than a lot of us here. Like I, I would love to learn more about where you live and, and living on another continent. So as I be building these relationships, I think about how could I contribute to that conversation? And then each time we'd meet, I'd take all that information and I'd learn how to make that conversation more meaningful so I could create a lasting friendship. So as humans, this process to listen, understand and predict, act and learn, we're instinctively wired to be able to do this. And some of us are better about putting ourselves in the shoes of other people, um, but we're wired for empathy. But what we found when we started to look at that, you know, can you sit in the seat of someone else and see their experience and then deliver on that? We found most companies are not wired this way. And we asked ourselves, so how do you use technology to codify an experience so companies can can we produce that type of personal interaction at scale. And what was really interesting is when you take all the technology and, and Genesis offers a lot of technology and you stand back and you look at it from this framework, our technology is uniquely qualified to be able to do this. And so how um, I worked a lot with Charlie Godfrey on creating these what we call systems of empathy or systems of technology. And that first system of technology is a system of listening. And so what happens there is as the customer is interacting with you across voice and digital channels, every time they press an IVR button, they speak into the IVR, they interact with a chat bot, they click on something, that's a piece of data. 
And the question becomes, can you collect, track and collect that information, not in a creepy way, in a way that's gonna to contribute to their experience so that you can then take that data and augment it with AI to be able to understand and predict how that customer's feeling, so sentiment, what is it they're trying to do, where have they been, and then predict that next best action that you could take. And then in the app step, we really want to connect that customer to the right resources. So for instance, it might be serving them up some self-service content that's really helpful and that's really pertinent because you've understood the intent. You're not just sending them some canned response, but it's a response that's really meaningful to them. So you might really want to have them talk to a bot or a human. And then learn is looking at those first three steps and saying, where were the experience gaps and how could we make it better? Natalie, based on uh, you know the research that you've done, Ginger and I have done a lot of research as well, surveying organizations about how empathetic they are. What would you say are like the one or two biggest empathy gaps that organizations can really focus on? So I would say that the most important thing is you have to collect the data. If you don't have the data, then you can't, you have nothing to augment, right? So if you don't have data, then you might have AI, but you can't really, you don't have anything to augment. And in that second step, you want to be able to augment the data with, um, with AI to segment and cluster it, and then be able to predict with a high probability that next best action. So it was interesting in the survey because people felt pretty confident about collect, doing the listening step, collecting the data. Um, they um, felt a little bit more uneasy about the next steps, which are understanding and predicting. And then in the action step, you know, again, if you're kind of looking at this as an orchestration flow, the ability to be able to really provide that experience, I think about 34% said that they had uh, access to profile information and recent interactions and transcripts and learned intents from bots. So, you know, I think one of the things that we found was a lot of companies, um, they have, you know, gaps in each of these, but the learn step was also one of the biggest gaps where um, only four in 10 respondents were able to really review the customer and experience related KPIs through surveys. and more mature businesses are using AI to be able to pr prioritize customer feedback. What's also interesting is we have what we call the system of success. And the system of its success, because this is not all based on technology, it's also based on leadership and culture and organizational change. And a lot of companies were finding that that's an area that they're, they're frustrated with. So, We've got a burning question because we 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 told people we'd talk about, you know, that empathy can be measured. And I know it's a work in progress, but Natalie, how can companies measure empathy right now? So I think that the best way to really think about measuring is to think about each of the systems of technology and then thinking about what are the components that you'd need to be able to make that work. And then most importantly, you could, you could have systems of listening to collect data. You could have systems of AI, right? And so AI can be used to automate things or AI can be used to orchestrate an experience. So you want to be able to, how we're looking at, you know, and we have an assessment, how are you being able to collect that data? How are you able to augment it with AI and predict that next best action? And then taking all that information, how well are you able to act on any channel? And then are you able to use computational analysis to be able to measure all those things, all those experiences and look for experience gaps? And you wanna be able to, it's one of the things I, I think about, you know, we talk about orchestration. So what does that really mean? And for me, orchestration, I would say, you wanna look at um, an example from elementary school. So the first time that a student, um, you know, they're in a, in a band or an orchestra 
they're all tuning up their instruments and then they start to play and it kind of sounds like pretty janky. It's like, you know, they're just learning their instrument and they're learning how to pay attention to the conductor. But when you go to a symphony, there's a conductor who is orchestrating when a family of instruments needs to play. And so when you think about the systems of technology, like the systems of uh, in an orchestra, you want to be able to measure how well are you orchestrating each of those instruments and each of those systems of technology to come in at the right time and at the right place. And when you do that, you get a beautiful symphony. And so these are the things that we really want people to be able to measure and then be able to step back and say, okay, what is that gap? What do you need? What do you have now? And what else do you need? And then what, it would, what would it take within your organization in terms of organizational skills and knowledge and leadership to be able to, to execute on that, right? So technology plus, plus the people factor. Natalie, thank you so much for uh, for joining us for our uh, inaugural LinkedIn Live, the CX Green Room. Fascinating to learn from you uh, about empathy and, and the systems and how it all comes together and orchestrating better experiences for both customers and employees. Uh, thank you everyone who joined us for today's live stream. Uh, you can help us by liking this live stream, by sharing it and by tagging uh, your friends and colleagues and people in your network who you think would benefit um, from joining this show. Uh, we have a number of resources for you today. There will be a link to uh, the book, Empathy in Action. There will be a link to the empathy assessment tool developed by Genesis, uh, which you can discuss with your colleagues and maybe participate in that initiative. And then we also have the white paper, The Business Case for Empathy, where you can learn more about where organizations are focusing on closing the empathy gaps today. So thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.